Health Work, a family wellness center. Real Food 101. Fat is healthy. Does anyone not believe this at this point? Okay. Oh, good. Fats are nutrient-dense foods. We need it to function. Fat and cholesterol are both used to regulate many functions in the body, particularly hormonal functions. Proper hormone function is obviously required for metabolism, reproduction, mood regulation, and much more. Anyone know anyone with any of these issues? I mean, I think we all know a handful of people that could use more fat. Fat is essential for hormonal harmony. It's a concentrated source of energy. Saturated fats carry all the immune vitamins, A, D, E, and K. They're crucial for mineral absorption. Back to the omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid ratios. Probably the way that I've come to understand this issue the best is that if something is raised the way it's supposed to be, like a cow, for example, it's raised on grasses, it's not fed the grains, it gets to pasture and eat what it's supposed to eat, it's going to have a very similar omega-3 to 6 ratio as a wild-caught fish. Eventually, a goal of yours should probably be to consume a diet with the correct ratios there, and then you won't need to supplement. Um, the fermented cod liver oil that Weston A. Price Foundation is a big proponent of actually doesn't have very many omega-3 fatty acids in them, um, and that is because they you know, encourage people to get most of that from their diet. So we need to intentionally decrease the amount of omega-6 fatty acids that we're getting and purposely increase the amount of omega-3. And you can do that by eating real food. Here are some sources of healthy fat. Dr. Taylor's going to go over some of these a little later. Dairy. Who thinks dairy's good for you? Who thinks dairy's bad for you? Okay, a couple people afraid to answer that question, and I can under, it was, it was a trick question, so I apologize. Um, conventional dairy is bad for you. I wouldn't even, I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone drink milk that you can get from 7-Eleven. Um, real milk that comes from pastured cows contains all the fat and has not been processed in any way. It's raw and non-homogenized. Second best would be ultra-low temperature pasteurized and non-homogenized. The homogenization process actually um, makes the milk particles so small that um, it can cause your arterial system to become scarred. Basically, you just want to avoid it. Raw dairy, on the other hand, is rich in enzymes, beneficial bacteria, healthy fats, minerals, and immune compounds. Fermented dairy is a wonderful source of nutrients also, um, including the probiotics. You, you want to avoid yogurts that have additives and preservatives and, of course, no low-fat dairy. Realmilk.com is a great place to source raw dairy because it is a little bit of a... It's a little bit tricky to source it, but it's not impossible. So if you need more information on that, just talk to one of us after the presentation. Just say no to GMOs. A GMO is a genetically modified organism. Many countries have actually banned the use and growth of genetically modified organisms, uh, particularly after a study was released where rats grew massive tumors. Um, on the heels of that, I think China, Russia, a couple other countries immediately said no. So um, since we're, our country is the biggest producer of GMOs, we obviously didn't opt out of that. but. Um, Hopefully, as the evidence becomes overwhelming and the consumer demand, you know, creates a tipping point, hopefully we will uh, quit with that madness. They're foreign to the body, and the body reacts to them as such. Uh, the BT toxin found in GMO corn actually can set up shop in your GI tract and continue to reproduce that toxin. And that toxin actually um, was modified so that when bugs would eat it, their stomachs would explode. And so that also happens to people, not surprisingly. And it can 
intensify food and environmental allergies and um, cause leaky gut. So, um, organically grown food cannot contain GMOs, which is one great reason to uh, purchase organic. These are the top 10 GMO containing foods. Of course, corn and soy, most people know about. Um, the dairy, again, that's why it's important to get raw, you know, grass fed dairy. Zucchini and yellow squash kind of surprise people, so you would want to make sure that those are organic and ask your growers. And papaya is also kind of surprising. How do you avoid these things? Purchase organically, look for that seal. Um, there's also a True Food Now shopper's guide. And of course, if you're not buying boxed foods, you are definitely able to easily see what's in your food. It should just be food. So truefoodnow.org. Eat more produce. Produce provides all sorts of fabulous nutrients, um, macronutrients, phytonutrients, um, and how can we do this? We can join a CSA, which is a community uh, supported agriculture, and you basically buy a share from a farm and you get deliveries every week, and then you're able to get local, know your farmer, support the local food um, infrastructure. You can frequent farmers markets. Um, our favorite is the Collin County Farmers Market right here in Plano. Greenling or It's Organic to You are both organic and local produce delivery companies. Uh, those are great options. You can plant a garden or adopt a plot at a community garden. They've actually found that kids who are involved in growing produce uh, consume more of it. So it's great to involve the whole family there. And eating the rainbow helps to ensure that you're reaping the benefits of all the different uh, phytonutrients. This is a really handy list to help save some pennies. Um, the Clean 15 is the list of the cleanest conventional produce. Sweet corn is up there, but again, that's the GMO concern, so you would want to probably just go ahead and get that organically. But other than that, those lists are very helpful. I refer to them often. And the peaches in Texas, unfortunately, are sprayed with about five different chemicals, so you do need to I, I don't know if you could find any in Texas that are that you'd necessarily want to consume. And you can visit ewg.org or they also have an app that you can download. Grains. They're kind of a vilified bunch too. Soaking in sprouting grains helps to neutralize the anti-nutrient phytic acid and phytic acid can pull minerals out of your body because they're very powerful chelators. So that is why soaking or sprouting is important. It also increases the amount of several nutrients, makes uh, the grains more digestible. Um, there's even sprouted flowers that you can buy and cook from. Sprouted breads are widely available as well as uh, tortillas and cakes and all sorts of stuff at this point. And really the sprouted flowers work great when you're making cakes or cupcakes or you know whatever you would make with low sugar, of course. Protein. Most people actually consume too much protein. It's, you know, we ha like to have a steak instead of a steak. So appropriate serving size is important to keep in mind. Again, here it's really important to have grass-fed, traditionally raised animals. Organ meats are really important, especially liver. Most Weston A. Price followers know that liver is a superfood. It's also important to consume the protein with the fats, like have your chicken skin with your ch pastured chicken legs. You know, it's. I mean, we all like that anyways, right? It's delicious. It's my favorite part anyways. Um, but there's a definite synergy with the nutrients found in the fat and the protein. Pastured eggs are a wonderful source of protein. Just need to be mindful not to overcook the yolk because you can oxidize it. And be sure to make use of the bones from your beef and chicken and, you know, make the bone broths. Fermented foods. Uh, a healthy gut actually has more bacteria than all the stars in our galaxy. About 80% of our immune system is made up of the microbes in our gut. Um, more serotonin is actually produced in your gut than in your brain. And many of these uh, beneficial bacteria are very potent detoxifiers and they're capable of drawing out a, a wide range of toxins and heavy metals. 
you're actually more microbe than you are human, meaning that you have more microbes than you do human cells. So that's kind of a mind blower. <laughs> it blew my mind anyways. Fun with ferments. There's so many different ways to experiment with fermentation. It is kind of like turning your kitchen into a science lab, but it's all fun. Um, kombucha is fermented tea. We actually have SCOBYs in the office, which are symbiotic colonies of bacteria and yeast. And basically, you brew sweet tea, and then these little SCOBYs, or mushrooms, or mothers, um, eat the sugar and then leave behind probiotics in a nice effervescent drink. Kefir water and milk are also fun. They're these little um, grains that you put in either the water or the milk, and they eat the sugars and leave behind beneficial bacteria. I have a lot of water kefir grains if anyone wants them because they're in my fridge right now. Sauerkraut, chutneys, yogurt, sourdough, these are all fabulous ways that you can experiment with your microbiome. And everyone loves superfoods, so I put a few up here. Um, organic pastured egg yolks are wonderful. Um, I think Dr. Taylor's gonna touch on those. Coconut oil. It's anti-everything bad, pretty much. Kale and other leafy greens. Sauerkraut, of course. Fermented foods, definitely superfoods. And key for the fermented milk um, is actually called nature's antibiotic. It's one of the most um, probiotic-rich foods available. So, berries. So what should the food pyramid actually look like? It should look like something more like this. <laughs>